Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor. And if you're watching this, it means I'm on vacation. I recorded some videos before going on vacation, because it's going to be a long time, and I shouldn't leave you without some dope thoughts to sleeve to. So, here I am. I'm just going to be making this quick little video that's sort of a response to my own video about disliking Billy Joel and disliking the song We Didn't Start the Fire. You see, in that video, I put forth an idea, and I didn't really flesh it out. So I want to flesh it out now, because I think it's interesting, and I think maybe you can relate, maybe you can tell me how you feel in the comments, if you have artists like this. In that video, I explained that I understand why younger people might be indifferent or generally positive towards Billy Joel. But when I was growing up, his music was everywhere. Everywhere you turned, people were saying how great he was. It was every single place you turned, every radio, every store, every everywhere, every everywhere. So what I was saying was that really made me hate his music. It took what was a sort of basic, eh, not really my thing, and turned it into a kind of burning passion. It was the ubiquity. Ubiquity, you know, meaning everywhere, right? It was everywhere. So someone made, made a comment, which was a good comment, a fair uh, retort uh, by someone named Benjamin Holiday, and then a string of numbers. And he said, so by that logic, does that mean that people who grew up in the 60s hate the Beatles? Now, this is interesting because I, I get how he's trying to get me. And, and this is good because I didn't make this clear. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, think about it. Think if you generally didn't like the Beatles, right? Like if you sort of understood what people liked, but it wasn't really your thing, I bet your feeling would turn to hatred. It's not just that familiarity breeds contempt. It's that if you dislike something, unwanted exposure develops into a much stronger dislike. Okay, <laughs> think think like even like breakfast foods, you know, like uh, I don't particularly like uh, Apple Jacks cereal, right? Like they're fine, but I don't particularly like them, you know, but if I had to eat them every single day, that mild dislike would turn into a great hatred. I think a really good way to think about this is to ask your ask yourself this question. Why does the Big Lebowski hate the Eagles? You know, he's from Los Angeles. They're a Los Angeles band. Uh, in the scene, so if you don't know, in the movie The Big Lebowski, starring Jeff Bridges, directed by the Coen brothers, there's a scene where he's had a long day, and he gets in the back of a cab, and uh, they're playing the Eagles. <laughs> and he gets so upset that the Eagles are playing that he asks the man to change the station. And he just says that he hates the Eagles. And the guy gets so upset he kicks him out of, out of the cab. But it always kind of stuck with me, and I totally get it, because I hate the Eagles, too. I hate the Eagles. I hate the Eagles. But realistically, <laughs> I like a couple of their albums. I like a bunch of their songs. I like Joe Walsh individually. I'm okay with some Don Henley songs. Like, what is this? Why is it that I hate them? Well, the reason is the ubiquity. What I imagine is that Lebowski hates the Eagles because if you live... If you grew up when he grew up, if you were young when he was, they were such a big band. And their sound was so soft and not quite hippie, but a little hippie, that it was something that created a deep hatred in him. Stay tuned to the end of the video where we'll just watch that clip together. So, do you have an example? Like, please tell me. Like, like, and, and I don't think you need to be ashamed. It's a natural thing. When I was a kid, I hated Michael Jackson for that reason. Now, mind you, I... Don't like the person, but the, the music, <laughs> off the wall, thriller, bad, dangerous. I mean, I like most Michael Jackson music, and I love a ton of Michael Jackson music. But when I was young, he was so ubiquitous that my general dislike really developed. I went to a private middle school for two years. I went to public school for most of my life, but a private middle school for two years. And in those years, I developed a burning hatred for the Steve Miller Band. You're probably saying, who the hell are the Steve Miller Band? Well, if you didn't go to a private school in the 80s or 90s, you probably don't even know who they are. You know, don't take the money and run, woo-hoo, or fly like an eagle. Uh, funny, because I love the Biz Marquis song that samples that. But that's the, the truth, you know, that, that, that you can hate the band just even based on what stage of life you are and where you are. I think another good example like that is some people hate, hate the Grateful Dead or hate fish. How many people who hate fish or hate the Grateful Dead didn't go to a prep school or to college? Probably zero. 
because that's music that you can avoid and never listen to. You grow up in rural Indiana and you go to a public school and <laughs> you, you get a job right out of, out of high school, you're not going to have a hatred of fish. You're going to be bouncing around the room. You're not, you're not even going to care. You're not even going to have any exposure. But if you have that little bit of dislike, it can grow. Now, sometimes there are acts which survive ubiquity. And that's what's important. That's the Beatles example. I love Bob Marley. I've always loved Bob Marley. I don't smoke weed. I don't pretend to be a dread. All that stuff. And trust me, you think there's a lot of Steve Miller in colleges and, and private schools. It's all Bob Marley. But it's that little seed. It's the seed that grows with exposure. So if that seed is healthy and good and is going to grow up into a beautiful tree, well, that's what happened. And now I'm a big Bob Marley fan. But if, <laughs> if that seed is not one you wanted to plant, it becomes a weed that overruns your entire brain garden, that's it. It's a hell of an image. <laughs> Brain gardens? You know, just some more examples. You know, I, I went to college in the 90s. So if I just hear, I just, oh. If I hear, oh. you know what that is? You know what that is? Hey. Yeah, that's Dave Matthews. Oh, I hate Dave Matthews. And 311. And these like weird sort of quasi-jam, funk, whatever bands, which... Listening to them now, realistically, they're fine. But it was their ubiquity. In the post-college era, I think the best example of this is the song Hello by Adele. I don't particularly care for the song. I actually, it turns out I like Adele, okay? Sorry, I'm hot. I'll explain to you why I'm hot at the end of this video. Where the hell am I? I'm not in a good place. I'm like, mentally, I'm in a great place. But, but physically, this is a weird place that I'm in. I'll tell you where I am at the end of the video. Oh, by the way, if you like this video, please smash the subscribe button. Please subscribe the smash button. All the liking, all that. If you especially like it, you can say AVAA and I'll leave a heart on any of my videos. So, um, Hello by Adele. It was not only ubiquitous, but the way that she sings is so piercing. Hello from the other side. It's so everywhere. That when that song was everywhere, I felt like it could be the quietest background noise, but I'd still hear, hello from the other side. And that's what developed that hatred. So, there's my little theory on ubiquity and music hatred. Do you have an example? You know, what, what makes you feel like Lebowski in the back of the cat? And by the way, if this cuts out, it's because I got copyright striked. So, who knows? But uh, one of the better scenes from one of my favorite movies. <laughs> He's trying so hard. Man, could you change the channel? Fuck you, man. I feel like my fucking music. Get your own fucking cat. I had a really rough night. Look, decided to kick your ass out. Man, come on. I had a rough night and I hate the fucking Eagles, man. <laughs> So, you know, that's, that's how I often feel. Like, if, if Billy Joel comes on, uh, that's the way I feel. Just, ah, oh, man, I've had a rough day, you know? So it's not even really hatred. It's more a question of circumstances. So where am I? Uh, I, I am in New Hampshire, um, a state which I have a very complex relationship with. I've spent many of my worst times in this state. Um, but I'm in a hotel near Crotchet Mountain, and uh, the power is off. So it's like a 90 degree day and there's no air conditioning, but I'm trying to keep it quiet so that the video works so the, the window's not open. So that's why I'm so hot and uncomfortable and in this sort of like uh, bucolic setting. Uh, you, you can keep your bucolic settings. Anyways, so uh, that's, uh, that's where I am. I'm, uh, I don't wanna be here. All right, well, I'm supposed to apparently let, let videos go to at least 10 minutes in order to be seen on the algorithms. I'm just going to cool it for another 20 seconds. You can ask me anything. Um, why am I in New Hampshire? I don't want to tell you why I'm in New Hampshire. Um, but it's not for a fun reason either. Why don't you tell me in the comments, why is Professor Sky in New Hampshire? I did meet Tommy DiPolo. I met him in New Hampshire.
that was cool. All right, <laughs> until next time, uh, I don't know when it'll be. I don't know how many of these videos I'm gonna get to record before we leave uh, for Hungary, Serbia, Slovakia, Austria, Marseille, and Paris. So we'll see. It is camera.